Hello, in this learning module, we are going to cover chapter five, which is making decisions. So in Blackboard, we have the PowerPoint, we have the quiz. I limited this one to 15 questions, true, false, multiple choice, and two points apiece. So actually, I should edit that, 15, make a note. There are only 15 questions. I thought I'd give you, a, actually, there might even be 10. I thought I'd give you a little break on the questions from the book. Uh, the Code With Me assignment is what we're doing here, so that'll be filled out. And then we have something new for this learning module. It's a workbook. <clears throat> I'll download that and use it as my guide for the Code With Me. Also, I have an extra credit opportunity, and I still have to post the assignment for this. So the quiz, learning module, um, eight Code With Me, and then the Chapter 5 assignment, I'll make a video for that, too, just a short one. And the Khan Academy, uh, Making Decisions Extra Credit. So to kind of guide this lecture code with me, this is what you'll turn in. I've created this document called a student workbook for Chapter 5. And if I have good feedback, if you think it's useful, I can create them for each learning module going forward. But my idea with this was that you could use it to reference your things later on when you're trying to do your assignment. Oops. No. So, no. I don't want anything harmful to my computer. Okay, so we have the table of contents. Um, some of the things that are in here are the major topics. So to begin with, the objectives. With Chapter 5, we are going to learn how to make decisions and code, code uh, our decisions within our program. Those fall into different structures. So to, be, to begin, when we started this class, we learned that there were three structures in programming. The first one is sequence, where it does one, two, three, and it's out. The second structure we're just introducing with this chapter and its decisions. So our program can go off in different directions and then it keeps going down. What we'll learn in chapter six next week or in our next section is that uh, we'll learn our third structure which is loops and what, what will happen is we'll have kind of a decision, a question, and then based on that question our code can go back up or go down. So decisions only go down. Loops go back up and they repeat a piece of code, and that's in chapter six. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, comfortable here. We are going to learn a couple different structures on decision making. One is an if statement, so we'll learn how to code an if. The other one is an if else, it's another structure we're going to look at. Um, and then the next structure is something called a nested if-else. Actually, I should highlight those instead so you can see what I'm doing. So we have an if is one option. These are all on making decisions. We have an if-else. We have nested if-elses. And then we have another thing called a switch or case logic. And all four of those are decision, are ways that you can code decisions. Now, these other objectives in the chapter um, we'll cover as well in this video and with the assignment. So the first one, um, the, well, the third bullet on, these are the headers in the chapter, but the third bullet on using multiple clauses, it's an easy concept where you have multiple things within an if-else. Um, the logic, the, the and and the or operator, those are also called conditional or uh, logical operators, and we will use those to, um, I can't spell operators, that's not right either, there. We will use the logical and, and the or operator to combine conditions. And then we have something <clears throat> called relational operators that we'll use within a condition. And 
the, we'll talk about precedents today as well, or with these videos. So with decisions, we can code an if, we can code an if-else, we can code a nested if-else, or the alternative to a nested if-else is something called a switch or case structure. So you can use this document, excuse me, use this document to kind of guide and reference the things in the chapter. <clears throat> Open up um, JGRASP or your compiler, <clears throat> excuse me, and what we're going to do is code the program on, uh, assign, it's called Assign Volunteer, and then we're going to make all um, alterations to it. So to begin, a basic if structure is if some condition is true, then we want something to happen. So, I don't know why that two is there. Woo. Uh, for example, <clears throat> oh, that's from chapter two. That's why that two is there. The structure of an if is if, and Word likes to capitalize things, which I don't want it to do because it is case sensitive. And then you write something called a condition. And then you open with a curly brace and you close with a curly brace end of if statement. Now, the things to, I can, you can, you don't have to turn this document in, but you can um, type along if you want, so you can save it for your notes. That's up to you. <clears throat> Let me zoom it in a little bit. I don't know how you can see on the screen. Whoops. Sorry. I can see all my fidgeting I do. 140. There we go. Okay, so your if, this is your basic if clause. And when you code a basic if statement, the condition is in parentheses, and it results, well, let me put it as a note because it's not there, but this, the condition results in a true or false answer. Now, if it's true, it does what's in the curly braces. So these in here would be clauses or statements. They could be anything. You can declare variables. You can do loops. You can do other if-elses. You can do um, calculations. You can do print statements. Anything you want can go inside of it. And an if, else, or a loop, or these other things that we learn. Now, one example would be of, an, of a condition um, would be based on using a relational um, operator. Relational operators go within a condition. So if, again, don't capitalize that word, or that letter I, <clears throat> um, if age is greater than or equal to 18, then I want something to happen. And that something can be anything. So you could do a system.out.println and a statement, um, legal voting age. Uh, you could do um, ballot equals true. You could do uh, anything in there. Like I said, you could do a, a calculation, you could do a system statement, you could do whatever you want. If this condition evaluates to true, so you would have to have a value for age before that. So maybe you would ask the user to enter age or assign age a value. And then it would ask the question. So if I said age was 14, this is going to drive me crazy with Word. I won't code much in here. But if I said age was 14, what you're asking here is if 14 is greater than or equal to 18, is that true or false? That would be false. So this would not happen. 
So that is your basic structure. One of the most common errors is people put a semicolon after a condition. Don't do that. <clears throat> there should be no semicolon after a condition. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm writing notes to myself, too. Okay. Now, the relational operators are listed here, and they're from Chapter 2. The uh, basic ones, these are things we already know. We have a less than. That would be the less than. It's just the less than symbol. We have less than or equal to, and that means less than or equal to. Um, the greater than, no, I don't want that. Thank you, we're stuck in that. Greater than, and then greater than or equal to. And this is from chapter um, two. We have not equal to, which I try not to use a lot. It's the exclamation point. <clears throat> and the book talks about why why not to use it. it causes you to, it opens you up for more errors, basically because you're thinking in opposite terms. And then the big one is double equal sign, and this is is equal to. So when you're asking a question, if, if age is equal to 90, you, you must be exactly 90. Or, or you could do something like if uh, gender is equal to male, for example. When you use the double equal sign, it's asking a question. The one equal sign is an assignment statement. So that's different. This is up here. This is an assignment statement. You're assigning... 14 to the variable age. It's very different. Sorry. It's very different than if you ask a question. If you put an equal sign, one equal sign in your condition, it won't give you an error, but it will just assign that variable or that value to that variable. So that's a problem. Whenever you're asking, again, Last time I'll say this, but this is huge. When you're asking if something is equal to something, it's double equal sign. So that's what most of my questions come on from this. Now, the if-else structure <clears throat> is how you can extend that. And we most of the time we code an if-else structure. So it's where if I were to take this one and continue it on, I would just say else, a key, which is a keyword, not a capital E, and then open and close. And again, this is what you put whatever you want in there. What would happen if age was not greater than or equal to 18? So it's the opposite of whatever you're asking. And in most cases, we have two options. So we use an if-else when we have two things, this or that. And we make decisions all the time in our day. If weather is, or if temperature is less than or equal to 50, put on a coat. Else, don't take a coat, something like that. We, we make, we live and make decisions on our, in our life um, based on conditions. So whatever is going on at that time, we're asking a question. Or we're asking a series of questions, and that's when we use our conditional and and or operators. So these here are called, <clears throat> again, relational operators, and they are used within conditions. So to check a variable against a variable or a variable against a value. So you could do it with, um, it could be if um, my age is uh, greater than or equal to your age, then I'm older than you. Else or this, not all or, or else, well, I would just say greater than. Let's not even say equal to. So if my age is greater than your age, I'm older than you. 
else I'm not. And my age and your age are variable names. Or you could do, you know, something, like I said, a variable to a value. My age is greater than or equal to 18. If that were true, then something else would happen. So within a condition, we use the relational operators, and this is how we compare things. So less than, less than or equal to, greater than, greater than or equal to, not equal to, double equal signs for is equal to. Now these are things that we learned like in third or second grade, but they're an easy um, place for you to make logic errors. What I do is I always read my conditions out loud because when I read it out loud, I hear it at the same time I'm reading it and I catch mistakes that way. Sometimes um, I do make a lot, I, I don't, well, we'll make, you'll make logical errors because they're not syntax, you won't generate errors. But sometimes our brains go faster than what we're typing or writing down, and that's where we'll make our logical error. So read your condition out loud to make sure it makes sense. Now we're going to start by coding the program <clears throat> on 249, and then we're going to make modifications to it so that we can add um, all of these different structures, the if-else, the conditional operators, and the if statement. And then we'll also use our logical operators um, the ands and the ors as well. Um, I think we'll reserve the switch structure for the assignment, but that is, remember, the switch and the case structure, that is an alternative to a nested if-else. So let's go ahead and open JGrasp, and we're going to create a program called Assign Volunteer. This is, uh, we'll start it based on the program on 249. And um, with this program, this is going to be the code with me. So new Java. <clears throat> so uh, you can turn this in in Blackboard when we're done with the video. Let me change my font to make it a little bit bigger. I just saw that. Where did it go? Okay, so let's start. We're going to do import in this program. Maybe, let me save it first. I'm going to call this assign volunteer import java.util.scanner. Remember, your class name has to be the same as your file name. And we are going to have a main. We're not going to do different methods, but we can, or we could. Um, we'll just keep it simple and learn our decisions. We're doing input, so let's do Okay, the purpose of this program <clears throat> is to assign um, names to volunteers, depending on whether it's a clothing item in a thrift shop or if it's an other item. So there's a series of variables on 249, and it talks about why things are constant and um, using the final data type. This is so that we can easily change it. So this is in um, question two. So just go ahead and declare your variables. Um, first one, donation type. String volunteer. This is the volunteer's name, and I'm actually going to set this equal to no volunteer assigned, and I'm going to do that because we're going to 
make changes to this program. Um, final, oops, final int clothing code equals one. Now remember, a final is a variable value, a value to a variable that you cannot change. It's a constant. You cannot change finals later on in the program. And when we use constants like this, we usually use all caps, um, which prevents us from doing camel, ca <laughs> camel casing. So we separate them with a amp, uh, an underscore. So <clears throat> final int other code equals two. Another constant. We have a string. These are our volunteer names. Closing pricer. Take liberties and name your variables or set the pricers, the clothing pricer to whoever you want. Maybe your friend and your best friend or your children. I'll do my children. So Owen is my clothing pricer. He's smarter than the other one. Only because he's older. And then my other pricer name is my, going to be my other son, Nolan. And that's all of the variables that I'm going to have right now. We'll add some in later when we learn range checking, too. OK. Now we are going to write a, uh, an if statement that basically says if the clothing if the donation type is one or equal to the clothing code then we want to make the clothing price then we want to assign the volunteer to the clothing pricer name um, so we'll have to do kind of our menu which is going to ask a question because remember when I was saying back here that when when we ask something here, we need to have a variable assigned. So we either ask the user to enter in a value or we assign a value. In this program, we're going to do user input. So make sure you have your scanner objects. And then we're going to ask a question. Enter one for clothing item or two for other item. We'll just keep it simple. You can, um, in the textbook, this is from page um, 249, number three, in the you do it, and they just ask it a little differently. So we'll just, I'm just shortening it up so our code is short, shorter. And I'm going to store this into my variable called donation type. So donation type equals um, input that next int. And now I have a value for, in fact, I don't want to use Prunella and I want that to go on one line. So now I can have a value of one or two <clears throat> into this um, variable donation type. Right here it has no value. When I run it, let's compile and make sure we're good. Enter one or two, I can enter a two and it ends the program because that's what I have it doing so far. Okay, now based on donation type, we're going to write our decision. This goes over to the next page, and we're going to say, if we use, condition, uh, we use uh, parentheses around our condition, so if it is equal to the clothing code, What we want to do, open, close. I Every time I open, I close. And I do that because I don't want to cry over curly braces. Uh, what I want to do is assign the volunteer to my clothing pricer person. So basically here, you're saying the volunteer um, assigned um, who will price this item is Owen. And that's because that's the value of this variable. 
Now, the, the benefit of using constants is say the next day you work at a thrift shop, you have volunteers, say the next day the clothing pricer is going to be um, Marvin. We would put Marvin there, and we don't have to change any of this code. So the constants are really useful because you only change it in one spot, and it could apply to everything. So that's your basic if. Now, we want to do an else, so we open, close, and our else is going to be what we want to happen if it's another item or an other item, not a clothing item. So volunteer equals the name of the other pricer. Uh, I just noticed I have, I missed my R up here. I'm going to put that in there to match up with the book. So my volunteer name is the other pricer name. So in this case, the volunteer who will price the other item is Nolan. Now again, the next day you have new volunteer names. Change it here, change it here. Nothing needs to be changed here. So that's your basic if-else. Now we want to display. Um, notice we're following the same steps. We're going to do this. Remember way back, step one, declare variables. We're going to do this in our assignments. Step two, do input. Step three, calculations or processing. And then step four, do output. So that's what we're going to do. Here, we'll just display System I'm on, page, on step five. Uh, system dot out dot print ln. Um, the i the item type is uh, donation type. Actually, that'll so that I'll just display one or two, and then we will say the volunteer who will price this is plus volunteer. There we go. That is all of the You Do It on page 249 and 250. Don't get excited. We're not done yet, so don't turn it in yet. But let's um, run it. Make sure it works. If you have to back up your program and fix errors, please do so. So we have, again, uh, this. Is, let me document this so you know what you're working on. This is code, the code with me for Chapter 5 on making decisions. And uh, right now, I don't know if this will change another semester, but right now, in this semester, it's in Learning Module 8. And it's called Assign um, Volunteer. And this is my name. Okay, so we have our import, we have our class, we open our class, we have main, we open main, we do input um, for, for our input object. We have our variables, we have our input, we have our calculations or processing, and then we have an, our, our output. So let me run. Over here, I will hit 2. The item type is 2. The volunteer who will price this is Nolan. I have an if-else, so there's only two options that could happen. If I hit 1, the volunteer who will price this is Owen. So it's one or the other. I would ask at this point any questions.
but this isn't interactive. So let's go back over to our Code With Me document. Water break. Okay, the next thing is using multiple statements in an if or an if else clause. And we are going to do this on page 255. We're going to add some programs to it. This section talks about the importance of using curly braces within your if else. I do it all the time because if I want to add to it, I've already got them in there. And if you only have one line of code like this, you don't need the curly braces. If you have multiple lines of code, you do. If you want multiple things to happen, if it's true, you need, or if it's false, you need curly braces. It doesn't hurt if you only have one line and you put them in there, which is what I did. And I do that for safety reasons because I don't want to screw it up later. But if you look, for example, on page 247, it says if quiz score is equal to 10, and it doesn't use curly braces. That's legal because there's only one statement inside of that um, condition. But if you added another statement in there, it would be illegal because there are no curly braces. So we're going to go up here and create a variable called string message. And I like to no message assigned. I'm going to assign my variables values because that will become a problem later on if something's not selected. So for example, if they don't select a one or a two. So we're creating a new variable called message. And then inside our if else, since we already have our curly braces in there, we can add multiple statements. So message equals, this is a clothing, <coughs> clothing item. Or a message that says, I keep getting the wrong thing. This is not a clothing item. And um, all that the you do it on page 255 does is adds that, just different words, but the same thing. And then we will display our message down here. And I'll just display message, simple like that. So now we have multiple conditions. And like I said, I always put my curly braces in there no matter what because typically I have more things that I want to happen. So let me run it again. We'll check our output so that we have something. So I'll hit 1, and now it says item type is 1. Owen will price it, and it's a clothing item. And then my other option will happen if I select 2. Not a clothing item. <clears throat> that is the um, this section using multiple statements in an if else clause. So make sure you do curly braces. Um, the next thing you can well, I give you the answers. These aren't from the quiz per se, but they're a good place to stop and check that you know the major things. So programmers use pseudocode to plan the logic of writing a, a program. That's where you can just explain in English what your program's doing. So like I mentioned earlier, we make if decisions all the time in our day-to-day -day activity. If hunger equals true, eat food. Else, don't eat food. Things like that. And you could write it pseudocode. You, you write it out. Um, you write it out so that you can understand it and make sure you don't have logic errors. If hunger is equal to true, then eat food. Something like that would be pseudocode. Uh, we are just writing the actual code, but the important thing with the decisions is think about where your program is going to flow before you code it. And this is going to be really important when we do the actual assignment for this chapter because it doesn't 
tell you it doesn't, I'm not walking along with you. You have to write it out, think about what you want to happen first, second, third, fourth, and so on. Um, a, a decision just involves alternative choices. Um, false in Java, the Boolean expression. Um, Boolean variables store true or false va values. So in Java, um, if statement, the Boolean expression, such as some variable is equal to 10, does not have to appear, appear in parentheses. You do. You have to put parentheses around each condition. Um, do, do just as you can block statements, you can block um, ifs and elses, and that is also um, dependent on your curly braces. And then uh, a valid condition to check whether your age is at least 21. If age is greater than 21, that means greater than or more than 21, so that would be false. So quick quiz, and that um, is what we've learned so far. Okay. 259 shows us how to nest decisions, and what do we do here? Uh, we are going to put this earlier. Um, for nesting decisions, this is where we have more than um, m multiple things that we want to um, ask. So instead of just two options, we have two or more. So if, well, ah, la, 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 la. you use this when you have two or more choices or options or directions that your program or that your code could take. So we have to nest a um, when we do that, we nest a question inside of a question. And it's very common. So maybe, for example, if weather is less than 50 degrees um, and, uh, or if your body temperature is really cold, then wear a coat. So you have different things that you're checking, um, and then you can, can continue it on with else if, else if, else if. So you probably didn't follow what I said because I'm not sure I did, but we'll code it. This is where an if else is inside of an if else, or an else is inside of an if, or an if else is inside of an else. You can nest things together. And what we'll do with this one is... Okay, we're going to um, add an option. So if they don't select a 1 or a 2, something happens. So right now when we run our program and they select a 4, it goes on and it says um, the item type is 4. The, well, that grabs, actually that grabs what was stored in memory. So that's kind of a problem. Let me put four. Um, this is not a clothing item. The item is four. And that, actually, that's not a what pulled in memory. It does the else no matter what because it's either one or it's not one, which is any anything else. So we want to change this and um, add it for something else. So we're, excuse me, going to do a nested if else. If donation type is equal to clothing code, else if donation type is equal to other code. You can leave it at that for right now. So this is an if statement inside the else. And if this is not true, it asks another question. If this is true, it doesn't ask the other question. So we have if donation type is equal to clothing code, do this. Else if donation type is equal to other code, do this. Else we could go on. If these are nesting together, donation type 
is less than, um, or let's say if it's equal to zero, open, close, and let's say that we want to exit. I think there's um, I think there's a function called exit where we can just exit out of the code. I might have to check that. Um, so we could say, we could modify our, our um, input. Enter one for clothing, two for other, or zero to end. So we have, if this is true, do this. Else if this is true, do this. Else if this is true, so that's three options, do this. Else, we always end with an else, open and close, and then we could say, for example, um, message equals whoops, not, uh, you did not enter a one, a, a zero, one, or two. Try again next time. Now this, um, this example, in order to try again within this program, <clears throat> excuse me, you need to write a loop. So we won't be able to do that until next section, next chapter. But here we have four choices that could happen. So if it's one, do that. If it's two, do this. If it's zero, do that. If it's not one, two, or three, I'm sorry, zero, one, or two, just print out this message. So let's run it. I'm not sure my exit statement is right. I don't use that very often because it's kind of a brutal way to end the program. Uh, let me pause and look that up real quick. And then it's obviously not right. Maybe it's exit. Well, let me just pause and I'll, I'll look it up. Whoa. Pause. OK, it's just system.exit <clears throat> and then 0. And that will end the program. I, like I said, I, it's kind of a brutal way to shut down your program, but it is an easy out. So when we say hit zero to end the program, it will just end. It won't do anything else. So again, we have four options that could happen. So let's run our code. Now, by the way, um, when we do loops, like I just mentioned a minute ago, we're going to write it so that we can give them a chance to go back up and enter in their code. So let me run this. I don't know if it compiles. Um, let me hit uh, 2. And 2 did what it did before. The volunteer is Nolan. It's not a clothing item. We have our other options, which is uh, 0. And that brutally, but it did end the program because zero to end, and then if we don't enter in a one, a two, or a zero, say you enter in an eight, it is going to print out this message. You did not enter um, a zero, one, or two, try again, and that's the final else. So item type is eight, the volunteer will price this is no volunteer signed, and that's because you didn't enter a valid option. So that's how you use a nested if-else. We use these a lot of times. So in situations when we want more than um, two or more, we use nested if-elses. Things that you should be aware of. In the textbook, it points out common errors, and these are very common. Uh, these are probably what I'll get most emails and texts from this week. Um, things like putting a semicolon here, don't do it. Um, writing an else with a condition without the if, don't do it. It needs else if, if you're going to have a condition, which is what's here, you need to have an if in front of it. Um, and then finally, end up with your else. Uh, that would be the last thing. So you could go on forever. Um, else if some other condition open, close, and else if something else, go and do something. But what you want to remember is the last thing is an, an else, and that's going to happen if it's not one of those other things. And this will also um, take place for character input as well. 
um, the alternative. Now, when you use the generate CSD, this is very useful because it shows you the conditions and if you're coding them properly. In, pseudo, or in flow charts, a pseudo, uh, decision is represented by a diamond, which is sort of what we have here as well. So you can see how it all links together. Um, a lot of times you'll also see it, it like that with the curly brace up. I think the textbook does this a lot in some other code. Well, they use multiple statements. It does it a lot. Um, or other compilers will do it. I don't like to do it that way because this way I can see what belongs into what a little bit closer. And that's just a visual thing, what I like to see when I code. It, that doesn't matter, though. But remember, every condition has an if in front of it. And else's have no conditions. Got it? Okay. Let's look at the alternative to an if-else. Sorry. I, I have about a hundred chapsticks because I like chapstick. This one is called Raspberry Cream. It's nice for me. Um, I kind of don't want to change this program, but what I'm going to do is um, you can, this is the one we're going to turn in. Let's do a copy. So I did Control A and a Control C. And let's do a new Java. And um, let's save this. And we'll call it Assign Volunteer with Switch. It's a long class name, but this is going to be a good example for you for the assignment. So I'm going to, I'm going to do a control V to paste my code in there. Let me change my class name with switch. And now it's the exact code that I have in this one. Just my class name has changed. Just compile. Same code. I didn't change anything. I copied and pasted. So copy everything from here, make a new project called Assign Volunteer with Switch. So we have two things going on. Um, like I had said, I'm going to jump around on this document for a minute. We'll come back to logical operators. But what I had said at the beginning was, another quick quiz, uh, using a switch statement. This is an alternative to nested if-elses. I prefer them over nested if else's when I code. I do prefer prefer them because it is um, it's easier to follow. It, it, you don't have as many curly braces, so you don't get lost in them, and the structure is a little bit more simple. So you provide a menu, and then you your basic structure is switch, and then no capital S, and then you pass it in an option, some variable, variable name, whatever it is. And then you open, close, end of switch, and then you have things called cases in here. So case one, and it does something. And then you, have, you go down and you code as many as you want, and then you have something called a break, which ends the case. And then you have case two. And then go down and do whatever you want and a break. And you can have as many cases as you want. Um, so the example is on page 271, but we're going to code it right now. This, this is easier to follow. It has, it has less curly braces. It's more clear than nested if else's. And in a lot of situations, you can easily easily change your code so that you don't have a nested if else. Um, what I'm going to do is everything that I have in step three, my processing, I'm on my assigned volunteer with switch program now. I'm going to comment out. So I'll have a bracket, I'm sorry, a slash and an asterisk here. 
before I have the word step three, and then I'm going to go down to the end of this if else, and I'm doing an asterisk and a slash. So that stops all of this code from running. When you do a switch, you have a menu, and you could do it, I'll just comment this, this out, and I'll do my menu a little bit clearer, um, just so it's not in one line. So system.out.println1 um, for clothing. You can write it however you want. I'm going to do it sort of like a menu and a little bit clearer and maybe a little easier for people to read when they're running the program. Those are my only three valid options, so we'll leave it at that. And then I'll do system.out.print and dot print ln, and then I'll say enter now. Well, let's do something like that. Okay, so all I did is I just made this into more of a menu looking thing. It does the same thing. We still have the same choices. I don't know if I'll get an error, but um, here, when I run it, I just made it a little bit different to read. So the other one read left to right. This reads up to down, up top to bottom, up to down. And then we don't have our, we have our if else um, commented out, so nothing happens. Now, even if you wanted to get a little fancy, since we're like that, we could put a um, header. We could do, you know, what the name of this program is for, Katie's Thrift. Thrift. That was me thinking. So use Thrift Shop. Let's put a couple tabs in there. Let's see. We're going to add our logical operators. And so we are going to have a slogan, nothing over $100. That's how thrifty we are. We don't sell anything over $100. Let's add a backslash N to go down. Oh, it would help if I had a semicolon. Um, by the way, we are going on with Chapter 6 next week, and then we're going to have an extra week to catch up because, it, and this is in the normal 14-week semester, so fall and winter, summer will be different, but we need a catch-up week. So these assignments, check your calendar for when they're due. We'll have a catch-up week when we get into Chapter 6. If you need to turn it in late, that's fine, um, because we're going to have a catch-up day in two weeks. So here I just have Katie's Thrift Shop, nothing over $100, and then here's my menu. So it looks a little bit better already, and all I did was just um, change my menu. It has nothing to do with the switch, but I'm going to convert convert this if else to a switch statement. Case logic. So I'll do switch, and my cases are going to be dependent on my donation type. So I'll pass that into my switch. I'll open and close, end of switch, and every time I open and close, and then I have cases. Now here we have three options. So I have case one, colon. And what do I want in there? Well, everything I had in this one. I'm going to copy from here. So case one is basically saying, if donation type is equal to one, do this. And then we break. 
You have to have a break. Have to have. Have to have. To end the switch. Otherwise, it keeps processing and it'll pick the last thing. Don't forget your break. And then you go on to case two. Actually, let me space this out with some white space so it's nicer. What do I want in case two? Well, everything I had here. This was when, when people hit the number two. This is what I wanted to happen. And then I add my break. And then I have case three. Actually, not case three, case zero. Because they match up. If donation type is equal to zero, I want this to happen. And then I have a break. Let me format so you can see it. Okay, so we have our menu. We have our switch. We pass in donation type. Case 1 was the same as that if statement. If donation type is equal to clothing code or case 1 in this set, setting, um, do this. Else if it's case equal to case 2, do this. Else if it's equal to case 0, do this. And then the final thing, if they don't enter a 0, 1, or 2, was the else here. And what we're going to call it in a switch statement is something called the default. So it's a keyword default and then that. I'll generate my CSD again. Pull this up so we can see it all together. And I just print out this error message. So I have the same thing I had before. I changed my menu, but that's okay. The same thing I have before, but I converted it to a nested if else. I'm sorry, I converted it from a nested if else to a case structure. Anytime I have two or more options, I typically do a switch structure because it is easier to follow. Yes. It is easier to follow and you're more um, you're more you're less than you're not going to make as many logical errors, what I'm trying to say. So here I can do zero it ends. I can do, it runs exactly the same way. I can hit one, it assigns Owen, and it's a clothing item. Um, and I'm still on the right program. It's just, to me, a little bit easier to follow. So save this example. You could cut all of this out now, but save this example. In the assignment, I'll probably tell you to do either an if-else or switch. It's up to you. They run the same way. The switch is on, I'm um, talked about on page 270, and it's an easy alternative to a nested if else. Okay, um, conditional, the last topic, I know we're running a little long here, but the last topic I want to talk about are the conditional operators. And um, range checking is something you're going to have to read on your own. We'll come back to it with, um, we're going to come back to it with, chapter 6 because it makes more sense, but um, the logical operators are the ands and the ors, and the and is the two ampersand signs, and the or are two pipes. Now, we might not be familiar with this key. Look on your keyboard. It's on the right-hand side above the enter, so it's the key that has the, the dash dash, which is a pipe, and then a back. Uh, backslash, and when you want to type a uh, pipe into your code, you would do, you would add it here, like here. So you would do shift and then pipe. So below the backspace and above the enter on your right-hand side of the keyboard, that's called the pipe, and that means or. In programming, we use two, so that would be an or, or if you're doing an ampersand, you would do two, ampersands, which are shift and then the seven, number seven on your keyboard. So the, the pipes, that's the or. The ampersand are the ands. And we use them between condition. So let's go back to assign volunteer one, the first program. <clears throat> and let's say that we're going to have a variable called cost. So we're going to add another variable. 
And since our store only, actually, I like this menu better over here, so I'm going to come over to this program. This menu is more pretty. I'm just going to copy this menu. doesn't matter what you do. And then I'm going to replace this menu. There. I like that menu better. It's Like I said, it's prettier. Okay. I hope you're still following along. Let me, let me just, um, you can pause and go back. But I am on my assigned volunteer, not with the switch. I'm going back to my nested FLs. Um, I added a variable called cost because I have nothing over 100. And I just copied my menu from here because I like the layout a bit better. Okay, so now what I want to do, in addition to asking if they are doing a 1, a 2, or a 0, I want them to enter in the cost of the item. So I'm going to ask my question. Print. Enter the um, item price or cost. What are we going to price it at? And then I will do cost equals input dot next double. It's a double. It's a double, people. And I want to put that as part of my item. So let's say that um, in order for the clothing pricer to also um, price the item, it has to be a certain amount. So let's say um, maybe the clothing pricer also only prices items over $50. So let's say uh, if donation type is equal to clothing code um, and the cost of the item is greater than or equal to $50, now, when I have the logical operator, the AND, I'm going to add on my condition, and then I'm going to put parentheses around the entire thing. So I have, and then you can even use your mouse to hover. So here is the first condition. Here is the second condition, and then parentheses for the whole thing. So in order for... Owen to volunteer for this thing. It must be, we'll just print out a statement, um, must be clothing and must be $50 or more. It, it, that, that's the way we have it written. And, and means both things have to be true. This has to be true, and this has to be true. Now, depending on your situation, if that's not what you want, if you want it an or, you can use your pipes. So it must be clothing, or it must be $50 or more, and then Owen would be the pricer in this program. So that would be how you would use the ands and the or and multiple conditions. There's a lot of different ways to code it. Um, I like to use the logical operators because it's shorter code. And all you have to remember is the, uh, let's see. What did I do wrong? I'm missing, I'm missing a um, quotation mark here. Um, the logical operators shorten up your code, the, the ands and the ors, and there's also a not as well, but it shortens up your code. You can have more than two conditions. So you could ask if donation type equals one, and donation type is greater than 50, or there are no other volunteers, then I want this to happen. The and takes precedence, and that is explained in the back of the book. Um, it happens first, unless you put parentheses. So the order of operations still happens. So let's do this. I'm going to hit two for another item. So typically that would be the other um, pricer, that would be Nolan in this case, 
but I'm going to put an item of over 60. So here it says the item type is 2, and the volunteer for this item is Owen. Now this is wrong, but it's this is a clothing item. That's because I don't have that in my kit in my case. Um, it's a it's a logic error. But what I wanted to show you is because I have that item, even though I entered two, because I have that item of sixty, it assigns the first pricer right here. Um, now what you cannot do now if I had and here again it would have to be both situations. What you cannot do, let me go over to my switch and um, what is illegal is multiple cases. So you can't do if case equals one or cost is greater than 50, um, that is not valid. And in this situation, you'd have to do it a little differently. So you could write inside of the case an if, st an if statement. If cost, you know, if um, donation type is one, uh, it would go into here. And then you could write an if statement in here. So if cost is um, greater than 50. But again, this would only go in here. This would only be checked um, if the donation type was one. So depending on what you're doing, you have different options. With that said, all of that, we're going to end this code with me. There's a lot of material in the chapter. Um, submit both of these files. I'll uh, make a change when I add the assignment. Um, submit both of these. If you're in my face-to-face -face class, do what we did in class. That's fine. Online or if you missed the lecture on um, Chapter 5, you're going to submit both the assigned volunteer and the assigned volunteer with switch. They're really great examples for you. Um, let me make sure both of mine run at this point. I think they do. Leave that as an or. Um, there's a lot of other things in this chapter that are really important. Uh, I'm hoping you're reading it. Um, how to make accurate and eff efficient decisions. Range checking, we can skip this because we'll do that in loops, but range checking is when you see if a value is within a, um, a value of a variable is within a certain range or outside a certain range. And there's a lot of examples in the book. Um, we'll do this in this chapter assignment and also the other um, next chapter. It's more efficient next chapter, so read about it. And um, the other things in this document is an extra credit for the Khan, um, Khan Academy. Bleh. And this um, is kind of a neat opportunity if you need more help on how to um, let's see if it'll open. <clears throat> what this extra credit does is it walks you through how to use decisions on um, encoding with a, a GUI app. So it's kind of fun. I did it. I walked through it. Um, if you have time and if you need more help on decisions, um, create or log in with your um, Gmail or Google account and go through this. Um, it probably take about an hour but it really does solidify how to write decisions. And even, um, that's an extra credit assignment. But also, if you go back, just click back here, you can go through any topic. So if you're still struggling on objects, which a lot of us are, to be honest with you, um, and we'll, we'll come back to it, go through these, um, this one, for example or object-oriented design, and it just, it walks you through short video tutorials, and it really helps you. Um, extra credit, we haven't had any extra credit or a lot in this course, so we have, if you go through the logic and if statement one, um, in Blackboard, I have four questions. Open it before you go through this tutorial, because you're going to copy and paste code from here into the extra credit, but it's worth 20 points. Um, in the document, some additional resources and some key terms that might help you with the quiz. So thank you. I know that was long, but it was really good stuff, and uh, I'll try to make the assignment a little shorter because you've listened to me so long in this. So have a great uh, day.
day and I'll talk with you soon.